All right, what's up? Hi, um, my name is Danny. I work at the Hunter Museum. I'm a visitor services associate and a uh, security guard. And today I'm gonna talk to you about natural dyes. Um, but first I wanna mention our upcoming exhibit that is going to debut on August 3rd. And it's gonna run until January 20th. January 10th? <laughs> it's called the F word, we mean female. It's a hundredth anniversary of women's suffrage in the U.S. and the Hunter is celebrating by having this exhibit that's all female artists. One of the artists specifically is Leslie Dill. Her piece is called Rise and I've seen it and it's real cool. I encourage you to go see it as well when this opens. That's a little preview of it, uh, but I won't preview too much because you should just go ahead and see it when it opens. She uses um, laminated fabric, hand-dyed cotton, paper, metal, silk, and organza with cotton for this art installation. Um, she really focuses on the color red, which is, it's referenced to the red paint um, called tika, or it's a material called tika, which is used um, in Hindu blessings, and it's a red powder Red is a celebrational color in India. It's mainly used in weddings, primarily in weddings, a lot of other celebrations as well. So it really ties into the celebration of women and this uh, exhibit. So yeah, I'm gonna talk about some natural dyes. I'm using three different colors. I used pink for avocado. I used uh, black names for blue. And I used ground turmeric for yellow. Um, the ingredients you're gonna need are some hand-dyed cloths. White, obviously, is a good color for that. Um, you're gonna wanna pre-wash them in something like a pH balance soap. Your friendly neighborhood seventh generation will work fine, that's what I used. You're gonna wanna soak your masks or cloths in that for a while. Um, for the colors that I'm using, you're gonna want avocados, specifically the rinds and the pits. You're gonna want some black beans, dry, and you're gonna want some turmeric, as well as water. And the next couple of things are optional. You could use a soy mordant for um, color resistance. You could use vinegar for brightness and um, rubber bands if you wanna make designs with them as well, like spiral designs and other kind of stuff like that. So the first one I'm gonna get into is the avocados. Um, I already dyed some stuff already just so I could have some examples. This is kind of what the color is. It's going to kind of turn out like this. Um, obviously you can use vinegar and soy mordant for like different color variations. But I just kind of use what I had at home. Um, so what you're going to need for that, so you're going to need three to four avocados for about a half pound of fabric. Um, you're gonna need some water, you're gonna need some heat, and you're gonna need something to put all that stuff in. So the first step you should do with that, you're gonna wanna peel your avocados, obviously. So, do you, <laughs> you just wanna like take it on the end and kind of circulate it all the way around. You wanna twist. Bam, you got your product there. You're really gonna wanna scoop that out and uh, get it really clean. Um, you don't really want a lot of the gunk still in there or you're gonna get some splotches like this. I mean, these like splotches right here. It still looks okay, but you want like a good product. Um, you're gonna wanna get them really clean. And you're just gonna take these, it's better if they're fresh. Um, you take the pit, you take the rind, you're going to want to put that all together. You're going to want to fill a pot like this. You're going to want to put everything in. You're going to want to put enough water to cover your fabrics and materials, but you're going to want to leave enough room for a little free flow, a little stirring around, a little bit like that. 
So step number three, I guess, for that is I'll put these to the side because I'm not going to use those now. I'm just going to have them for lunch later probably. Step number three is you're going to want to put all that in the pot, bring it to about a boil, and once it is boiling, you can bring it down to a simmer, and then you can leave your product in there for about 20 to 60 minutes. Um, longer if you want a darker color, if you desire that. Right now, I'm letting some material sit in a crock pot. I already boiled the water. I already let it simmer. Now it's just kind of like on a low heat in a crock pot right now. I tried to dye some masks last night or yesterday or so, and they did not turn out that well. I think it's because I didn't use enough rinds or pits. So when I made that shirt over there, I was sure to add more pits and more rinds. This one sat for about an hour and as you can see, well, but that one sat overnight. So the more time in the water and the more pits you use, you're going to have a darker product. Uh, yeah, so for the second one is black beans. You're gonna get a really cool blue color with that. And this recipe is pretty cool as well because you don't need heat for this one. You just need some dry beans like this and you just want to let them sit in water for about 20 hours. You will need a lot of time for that, obviously. So I went ahead and I put some beans in a pot and I let them sit. This one sitting, has been sitting for about three to four hours maybe. And already, you're not really supposed to touch the masks or the product, the fibers with your hands because you can contaminate the dye, but I'm going to touch it because I'm just going to show right now. It comes out to be this really cool dye, this really cool blue color. Um, the longer you let it sit, the darker it's going to be, obviously. You can add vinegar and stuff to that to make it a little more vibrant as well. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and pop the shirt in there. This is like 96% cotton and 4% spandex. So it might work pretty well on there. We'll see how it is. For this one, I'm just gonna like set it in. I'm not gonna do any like rubber band designs with it. I'm just gonna, again, touch it, but I really shouldn't be touching that. And I'm just gonna put it on in there. And it's not exactly the beans that are the dye. It's the water that comes like from the dye, the residue. So you can either leave your beans in there some recipes will tell you not to, some recipes will tell you to strain it, but some recipes will actually say if you want like a darker color, leave the beans in there. And again, if like any of you are familiar with these processes as well and are watching this and you're like, wait a minute, I would do it that way instead, do comment or whatever. I'm not really sure how Facebook Live works. I think you can comment on these, but definitely like share your methods as well because this is one of my first times doing this. I'm still a little new. I'm a poser. So I'm gonna let this sit for maybe 20 hours. I don't know, maybe I'll forget about it and I'll be here for three days. But then I'll have a really dark color. I made this mask yesterday. This one sat in there for about, I think like seven hours. I just took it out because I was not patient. It came out to be this pretty cool color. Um, in person, with the better light, it's kind of more vibrant. This still looks pretty good right here. I did end up getting some turmeric on it as well, so it's a little splotchy, but I'm thinking I might actually re-dye this one with more bean and maybe even like splatter some turmeric on there or something. Just see what happens with my next go around. And then for the last one is turmeric. This one's pretty fun because I think it produces the best colors for, at least when I did it, I think. This one right here is turmeric. I think it came out to be the best. So for this one, your ingredients are gonna be turmeric, vinegar, water, and pot and heat. And I'll show this one that I did earlier because it's pretty cool. I really like the way it's turned out. I did the spiral effect where you, um, 
you take your little guy, your guy guy, and you twist it around like you're wringing out a towel. And then after you've wrung it out a little bit, you'll like flatten it out and twist it up into a spiral. It looks a little messy right now, but you got the gist. And then you just rubber band it up, plop it on in. And this one, I actually added some blue ink splotches and it was completely unintentional because I accidentally washed an ink pen in the washing machine the other day with my clothes. So, yeah. little tidbit there. And, hmm, I made some of these masks yesterday as well. Definitely my favorite color. I let this one soak in there for about an hour. I think it looks really cool. These straps are really nice looking. I also did this one. This was actually a mess up avocado one. So I, when I found that the avocados weren't really producing what I really wanted to produce, I just threw this in with the turmeric and I left it in for like, I think like 30 minutes or so and it made this color, which is really cool. This one has a couple more steps in the process. Um, it's gonna require 12 cups of water and three fourths cup of vinegar, as well as a couple tablespoons of vinegar. Turmeric, water, vinegar. Um, I went ahead and I put 12 cups of water in here because I think that's kind of a boring thing to watch, but I'll go ahead and add the turmeric in. Well, turmeric, turmeric's pretty cool. It's of the ginger family. And if you've ever worked with turmeric before, you know that it stains just about everything that you touch, even your fingers. But it's got a lot of good properties as well. Um, Anti-inflammatory, so it's good for pains and aches, and it's also good for like digestion, and it's also good for your immune system. It can help you with a cold too. So I'm gonna take a little uh, cup right here gonna fill it in. You are gonna use like kind of the whole thing, but that's okay. You dump that on in there. People have been using all this stuff for like thousands of years. Like us today are not the ones to discover this. Um, people have been doing this for ever. It's probably one of the oldest ways to dye stuff, but it's a good pigment. It's a great little pigment right there. I'm gonna dump it in right there. And then I'm going to add vinegar for brightness. I think that's why the turmeric ones looked so good is because I did only use vinegar with this one. You just want like a couple teaspoons. I put in three. I'm gonna do three again. And then you can add some more in there. You know, it'll be like super, super bright. And you're gonna wanna mix that around. Mix it in there real good. You can go ahead and put it on like a low heat. And you're gonna want to uh, stir it, mix it as it's heating up. Kind of looks like macaroni and cheese mix in here. that's good and stirred you're gonna want to yeah like I said keep that at a you're gonna want to bring this to a boil and like I said stir very well once it's hot then you can put your stuff in or you can put it in immediately I'm not really an expert I'm just a scientist um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in there and watch it watch it soak a little bit I'm also gonna throw in a this shirt right here for a lovely friend of mine. You pop that on down in there. And yeah, you're just gonna wanna leave this one in for about 20 to 60 minutes as well. Longer, if you please. I tend to wanna leave this stuff in longer just because I guess like the darker the color, the better. It's a little more vibrant that way. Yeah. Um, I do wanna reference the 
uh, sites that I used to kind of guide me along. I kind of embellished them in a way, in some ways. Um, for the avocados, I used um, a site from the City for Urban Education about sustainable agriculture, uh, cusa.org. They helped me out there. For the black bean recipe, I used rosegardenlane.com. And then for the turmeric, I used onlinefabricstore.net. And yeah, definitely research this stuff if you want to do this at home. Like I said, you can use better products or better materials for better results. I just really used what I had because, I don't know, you're like, I'm home all the time, just going through my cabinets all the time, and I'm just like, oh. But no, seriously, this is a good activity if you are home a lot right now. You probably should be home a lot right now. Um, if you're working from home and need something to do in the middle of, as a break, just to clear your mind, it's a good thing. Just like make some of these, pop these in some pots, um, go back to work, and then in like 30 minutes you'll have a cool new shirt. And I say you shouldn't really go out and buy too many avocados because avocados are kind of a luxury. There's kind of a shortage. They're also something that, I don't know, it's something that the people that make it don't necessarily always see the monetary benefits from it or whatever. That's not the point. But anyway, so like, yeah, avocados. Yeah. I made guacamole. <laughs> and it's really good. I ate almost all of it already. Tell us how it is, Leslie. It's delicious. She did a great job. Yay! And so can you. And so can you. Um, if there's any questions anyone has, I don't really know how to view them. So yeah. Thank you for watching my tutorial. <laughs> Um, go see the exhibit on when it opens up August 10th, and you have a lot of time to go see it because it's going to be on display until January 20th. It's a great activity to do right now because, you know, we're all social distancing, and I can say from experience that we're taking a lot of precautions at the Hunter. So if, it's, if you're needing to get out of the house and do something because your brain's about to explode, it's a great place to go for some good brain explosion. Thank you and good night.